Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida Extension Service here in Hernando County. And joining me today is our special guest speaker on the subject of pineapples, Tia Silvasi. And Tia is with Orange County Extension Service. And I'm going to turn it over to Kia and or Tia in just a minute here to let her talk all about the finer points of pineapples and exactly how to grow them. But I just want to cover a couple of things really quickly here for everybody. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And there we go. Hopefully everybody can see that. Thank you so yeah, much for great. tuning in to um, Growing Groceries, Perfect Pineapples at Home. And I just want to mention everybody who registered for this workshop is eligible to come by and pick up three pineapple plants. And the variety of pineapples that we got, it's a variety called Florida Special Pineapples. And this is a variety that grows very, very well in Florida. Apparently Libby Fruit Company used to grow it a number of years ago down in Immokalee, which is down in Southern Florida. And they are cold tolerant, which is very, very handy here in Central Florida. I assume most everybody in the class is either in Hernando County or near Hernando County. So keep in mind, we are Central Florida. It does get cold here. So these are cold tolerant. They have a very attractive kind of reddish splash leaves. I got a picture to show you in a moment. And the fruit coating, when it gets a fruit, the outside of the fruit has a little bit of reddish on it and makes a nice golden yellow pineapple. I could not share any pictures in this presentation or in the materials leading up to this because all the pictures of this variety that I found online are all copyrighted. And I don't wanna get in trouble for that. But if you Google Florida Special Pineapple, you'll see pictures and you'll see what they look like and you can find some more information about this particular variety. But don't worry, as you're gonna learn from um, Tia, pineapples are pretty easy to grow. They're not really, when we look at all the different things that we can grow in our yard or in an edible landscape, pineapples are really pretty easy. Here's a picture of what a couple of the um, plants look like. I potted them up because when we pick them up, they come in just little individual plugs. So we go ahead and repot them in three inch pots and they've grown quite a bit in just the last two weeks. So very healthy plants going really well, very important. And I'm gonna mention this again later on to keep them well watered this time of year because it's really dry out there. And until you get them in the ground and really well established, you're gonna to have to keep a very close eye on the watering and keep them irrigated. So to pick out the plants, you can swing by the Hernando County Master Gardener Nursery this coming Saturday, Saturday, March 12th. I'll be there from nine in the morning until noon. And the nursery is also open. So if you wanna buy some other plants, that's great. The address is right here. And as tea is going on, I'll go ahead and put that address once again in the uh, chat box in case you need to write it down. If you're not able to make it by the nursery on Saturday to pick up your plants, just get in touch with me. My email is right at the bottom there, uh, wlester at ufl.edu. And we can have some plants. We do have some plants here at the office. And if you let us know that you're coming by, we'll have them here ready for you. And you can just come by the office and pick them up. We're open eight to five, Monday through Friday. And here's the address is 16110 Aviation Loop Drive in Brooksville. We're right at the very front edge of the um, Brooksville Airport right next door to the um, post office, if anybody's familiar with the area. Like I said, if you have any issues or problems or you need us to hold on to the plants a little bit longer, just send me an email. I'm sure we can work it out. Those are pretty easy problems to solve. So of course we wanna remind everybody to keep following all of our online classes, everything we have coming up. Uh, if you just go to Hernando Extension, all one word, .com, that's a freestanding web page and it has a feed from our Facebook page with links and information on all of our upcoming classes. If we have it planned out and posted, it's there with all the links, the dates, the times, everything else you need to know. Or go ahead and just follow us on Facebook if you don't already, 
Our short name is Hernando EXT on Facebook. So be sure to go on there and follow us and like us because every little bit helps on social media. And with that, if you guys have any questions, like I said, if you want to hold your questions about growing pineapples to the very end after tea is done, that way we can go ahead and go through and get all of them answered all at once. So let me get out of my PowerPoint there and turn it over to Tia Silvasi, who, like I said, is with Orange County Extension Service and has a lot of experience with a wide variety of edible crops, edible landscaping procedures, um, tropical fruits, everything else. Great wealth of information. So Tia, it's all yours. Okay, great. And thanks for having me on today to talk about some pineapples. Um, pineapples are a very Florida friendly plant and I have them growing all over my um, personal home garden and they're just so easy to grow. They're drought tolerant, they're small and compact. They don't get too large. They're easy to propagate. And so you don't have to buy new plants all the time. Um, you can grow them from the pineapple tops that you get at the grocery store. And so there's just a lot of, a lot of possibilities with these. They don't need a lot of fertilizer a little mulch and um, compost, you know, can aid them along. And they're quite versatile in the landscape too. They, they say to plant them in full sun, but they'll grow in part shade and even full shade. They just take a little longer to grow. Um, kind of the bad thing about pineapples is that you have to be patient because it can take you know, 18 months to two years, even three years sometimes to make this pineapple plant go to fruit. And then you have to be very careful too. Once it does um, get large fruits, then the raccoons and the animals, they have a really good nose for when the pineapple is starting to ripen. And so they will get it before you do sometimes. So, you know, at that point you can bring it into the house and um, let it ripen inside. So let's get started growing perfect pineapples at home. And again, my name is Tia Silvesi. I'm the Florida Friendly Landscaping Agent in Orange County. And my email is there if you need to contact me. So a little bit about the taxonomy to start with. Um, the scientific name of the pineapple is Ananus camosus. And they're in the bromeliad family. So, you know, we have the ornamental bromeliads pictured here on the right. There's also the tillandsia, the air plants, and the Spanish moss that hangs from the tree. Um, those are all also related to bromeliads in the bromeliad family. And so bromeliads are known for, you know, living well in Florida, not needing a lot of inputs. Um, they grow very nice at the base of trees or some of them are air plants and they grow up in the trees. They don't have a lot of root system and they don't need a lot of water or fertilizer. So you can treat the pineapple um, like other bromeliads but of course, to get a good large fruit, you do want to give them a little extra care, a little extra water and fertilizer and compost and mulch. And, um, you know, just give them a little extra love to help them grow along. So let me talk about the range of where pineapples can grow. So they are a warm climate type of tropical crop and they're native to Central and South America as well as the Caribbean. Um, so, you know, not too far from home here in Florida. Um, they grow really well in Florida, Central Florida, also South Florida. They will grow in North Florida, but you might need to give them a little cold protection um, because they are cold sensitive. So um, zone 9A, zone 9B, zone 10, um, zone 11, all of those zones are appropriate for growing pineapple. But again, if you're in North Florida or uh, a colder climate, you can grow them in containers and bring them in when it gets cold out. 
um, because they do grow really good in containers or you could also cover them with some sheets or blankets or some mulch or hay if we do get a cold snap. Um, we did get a cold snap this winter and my pineapples uh, were not affected, maybe because most of mine are under trees, but um, they can get a little bit of cold damage and the leaves will kind of freeze and die back, but usually the plant will still recover um, even though it takes a little while. So, um, you know, if you're in one of those cold sensitive areas, think about planting, you know, under the trees or in other microclimates where they'll be protected, like next to a little pond or on the west side of your house, something in the warmer little spot there. So um, let's look at the production of pineapples worldwide. So um, they've been cultivated for thousands of years, you know, in the tropical Americas and the Caribbean region. Um, they are a warm, you know, subtropical, tropical type of crop. Um, so you can see from the map here that most of the production is in the warmer regions of the world, um, like Asia, Africa, um, South America, Central America. Um, Hawaii is um, not too big on this map, but Hawaii had the dole plantation and a significant amount of pineapple production. Uh, but now because of the high cost of living in Hawaii, a lot of it is shifting more to like Costa Rica and that area in Central America. And then the pineapples were introduced to Florida in 1860. And I've, I've heard that there were some small pineapple farms um, you know, even up here in central Florida, like Merritt Island over by Cocoa Beach on the east side, I've heard of some pineapple farms over there, um, down south in like Immokalee, you know, some more commercial production down there. So it's not, it's not a huge crop for commercial production in Florida, um, but they are really good in the home landscape and that's what we'll be mainly focusing on today. So a little bit more about um, pineapples. So they are a herbaceous perennial plant. They just grow in a small little clump. Um, they don't get woody. Um, they can live for several years. And even after they make the fruit, like you can see in this picture here on the right, the fruit is coming out, but it kind of has these suckers here on the side. So even after you harvest the fruit, um, the plant can live longer and has potential to produce more pineapples. Um, it has these kind of sharp sword-like leaves. You don't want to um, get poked too much by these. And depending on the variety, um, the leaves may be serrated or not serrated. So I try to choose the the smooth leaf margins for the ones around my home landscape because I don't like getting all cut up. You know how some of those bromeliads can have those sharp serrated leaf edges. Um, and the leaves just spiral around the central stem. So they're, a, they're just a real cute low maintenance plant. Um, they vary in size like three feet on average, but some of them can get even as tall as me, you know, about five foot tall. Um, you also find some ornamental varieties and those can have variegated leaves or there's like the ornamental pink pineapple and just some real neat things, you know, in the pineapple world here. Um, again, I said you have to be patient because the, the plants do take a couple months, I mean, many months to a couple years to be um, reaching mature size to flower and fruit. So the um, pineapple flowers, like the plant needs to get to a certain size or have a certain number of leaves before it flowers. Um, our EDIS document says once it has 70 to 80 leaves. So that's a lot of leaves. Um, and it does have a flower that just comes out of the very top or the terminal part of the plant. And then this is a, it's a compound flower. So each of those little segments you see on the pineapple are individual flowers. And we call it an inflorescence uh, for a fancy name for a flower. 
because it is actually, you know, 50 to 200 little individual flowers in that pineapple. And um, that's why it looks the way it does with all those little segments on it. Um, so about pollination, um, pineapple plants, they're self incompatible. And so that means that pollen from the same variety won't res result in a seed production. And so pineapples don't usually have seeds. Um, they've kind of been bred to be seedless. And so they're um, kind of self, um, they pollinate themselves. So you don't have to worry about pollination. Um, but if you do grow several varieties next to each other, then you might get some seedy fruit. So, um, you know, maybe stick with one variety or have them flower at different times. But I haven't seen too much uh, problem with that. I, I have a couple of different varieties and I've never gotten fruit that was too seedy. So the fruit is... Uh, a nice round, large fruit. I mean, if you're a, a backyard gardener and you get to harvest a pineapple, that's definitely something that can feed your family. Um, the technical, technical name for the fruit is called a syncarp. And a syncarp, uh, like I was talking earlier about the inflorescence, is derived of many individual flowers into one fruit. And so the fruits, they can get quite large, up to five pounds, um, depending on the variety and also the environmental growing conditions. So if you want large fruit, then, you know, give it a little extra love, a little extra watering and fertilizer to get the plant to be large, because the fruit size is often depending on how large is the plant how healthy is the plant when it triggers into fruiting mode. So if you have a nice large plant, you'll get a large pineapple. If your plant's been struggling a little bit and it's not too big, then you might have a smaller pineapple. And then you know the fruit is mature when it starts to change from green to yellow. And at that point where you first see that change, that's where I would recommend harvesting the fruit if you have it outdoors so the wild animals don't get it and then it will continue to ripen um, after you bring it inside of the house. Um, it does start to ripen from the base of the fruit to the top of the fruit. So just look for a little yellow or orange shoulder and then that, that way you know it's time to harvest. So there are a lot of different varieties of pineapple. Um, I'm just gonna talk about some of the more popular ones here. Um, the smooth cayenne, um, that's like one of the most widely grown varieties in the world. And um, the leaves are kind of spineless, but do have a little bit of spines like at the very base and at the very tip. So the middle part is smooth, but they have spines and that's, one of the identifying characteristics of some of these varieties is do the leaves have spines or not? And then the other thing is how big is the fruit and what color is the flesh? So um, the smooth cayennes have large fruits, like five to six pounds, and they have the yellow pulp and um, you know high sugar, acid content. Um, Another real popular one is the Del Monte Gold or Tropical Gold. These are both common in grocery stores. Um, these fruits are a little smaller, like three to four pounds, and they have the yellow pulp. These um, fruits are kind of cylindrical in shape, but they have a little bit of a square shoulder, you know, on the top part. And so that's another identifying characteristic is the shape of the fruit. It's just a subtle, like kind of square shoulders. It's not really square, but you can see that, that little um, angle there on these types of fruits. Um, the queen pineapples, those have spiny leaves and the fruit are generally smaller, like two to three pounds. Um, you know, this, this is another variety that you can grow. I have some of these and this, the spiny is pretty spiny. So be careful when you're handling them. 
um, but they do produce um, delicious fruit. All, all the fruits are very good. Um, also Singapore Spanish, um, another variety with um, some spines near the tip, you know, medium sized yellow fruit. And then the sugar loaf, um, these are sometimes called like the, the white pineapple because um, they're called white sugar loaf or Kona sugar loaf. They have the smooth leaves and large fruits and white flesh, which is kind of interesting. It's not purely white, it's more like a light yellow flesh. And they say it has an edible core. Um, it's just less fibrous than some of the other varieties. So yeah, you can eat the core. So sometimes people just call this one the, the white pineapple. You'll hear about like the gold pineapple and the rest of them are just kind of that yellow color. And then um, the Florida special variety that you will be receiving after the class today. So this um, variety, Florida Special, um, like Bill said, it was bred for Florida by the Libby Fruit Company back when they had some fields in Immokalee. And they say it's a cold hardy, you know, I don't, I don't think it goes much um, colder than 28 degrees, which is kind of the normal hardiness of pineapples and suitable for zone nine to 11. Um, they have golden flesh, good flavor, and they are spineless, which I like that part. They do have a slight reddish tint to the leaves and the, the fruit. So that's something uh, unique about this variety. And it will be exciting to grow some of these. Um, so moving on to climate, um, like I I talked about the cold damage. So anything below 28 degrees Fahrenheit can kill a plant. Um, if you have it planted in a, a microclimate or underneath some trees or something, it will be more protected. Um, you can also bring it in the house. Um, if it is below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, it's kind of chilly and it will slow the growth of the pineapple. So you might want to bring it in the house at that point but I wouldn't really cover them for the frost protection unless the temperatures are going to be under 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And so these are real versatile plants. They do great in a Florida friendly landscape. Um, you can grow them in sun, park sun, shade. They can be a border plant, like an accent plant, um, plant them around the edges of your trees. And then they're tolerant of all kinds of conditions. So they're drought tolerant. They can take some dry weather. Although um, right now we are coming up into our dry season. So that doesn't mean that you never want to water them. Like they can survive that. But again, to get the best fruit quality, you do want to um, irrigate them a little bit in this, in this time of the year. Um, flood tolerance. So if we happen to get a heavy rain and they're underwater for a little bit, they will be fine. Um, their leaves are very strong. So they are tolerant of wind. Windy conditions might dry them out a little bit more or might um, damage the leaves a little bit, but they will do much better, you know, than a lot of other plants in the wind. And then they're also salt tolerant. So if you're in a coastal area, or you have some um, salt spray from time to time, you might see little dots on the leaves, but they will be okay and they'll be able to um, survive in those conditions. So just a great plant for your landscape. I love pineapples. Um, they're fun to propagate too. I mean, getting a pineapple at the grocery store and bringing it home and eating it and enjoying the fruit and then also cutting um, the crown off the top part. So there are four different types of ways that you can propagate um, the pineapple plant at home, like when you're growing the plant. Um, the, the most common method is using the crown, which is the top of the fruit. Like you can see in the picture here to the right, you have the pineapple fruit and the crown is that vegetative part um, just grown right out of the top of that pineapple. So that's uh, a 
great way to start the pineapple. Um, sometimes the pineapples will produce the slips, which comes from the fruit um, stalk, but below the fruit. So coming off of the fruit stalk. Um, also from the suckers, the plant suckers, like other bromeliads, they'll kind of sucker out and make little pups kind of in the axles of the leaves. And then there's another um, way they self-propagate, which we call ratoons. And these um, arise from the underground portions of the stem. So at the very base of the plant, you know, the, the stem of it or the root part, then it will just make little baby ones down there. And once they get big enough, you can pluck them off, um, off of all these plant parts that it's producing. And um, when you do harvest the pups from the pineapple plant, you wanna let them air dry and kind of let that um, wound heal over and dry out. Um, the one thing that does affect pineapples is root rot. So we never want them to be too wet or like submerge them in, in water for too long. Um, you can plant these directly in the soil or some people put them in a little cup of water. But again, if you're gonna put it in the cup of water, only let it grow until you start to see some roots come and then transfer it into the soil. That way you don't um, get the root rot. So here's some instructions. If you're, you know, you have a pineapple that you bought at the grocery store and you wanna plant it. So you just either twist or cut with a knife the crown off of the fruit. And then you can um, remove any of the fruit that might contribute to rot problems. So any of the fleshy pineapple fruit, you know, kind of peel that part off and, and discard that in the compost pile. Um, let it air dry for a few days. And then um, some people pull the lower leaves off to expose the roots a little bit more. I think that's a good practice. And then there's a technique if you want to cut this pineapple crown into a couple pieces. You can cut it in half and make two pieces. You can cut it into four and make four pieces. And this is called the split crown technique. And again, after you make those fresh cuts, you want to let them dry, air dry for a little bit. And once they've kind of healed up for a couple days, then you can put them in the pot with the clean soil media and water them in. And then you will have, you know, one, two, four new pineapple plants. So you can especially do this cutting method if you really want to multiply your pineapples fast. Although just planting the whole crown will result in pineapple fruit uh, quicker because the plant has more energy to grow and produce. So you'll get the fruits a little quicker if you leave it whole. Um, so what makes a pineapple to fruit? That's probably the most common question that I get here in my extension office because the pineapple plants, they just do so well in the landscape and they just seem to live forever. So you're, you're begging your plant, like, please fruit, please make a pineapple. And so there's a couple uh, environmental factors that make the plant fruit, including cold temperatures. So if we get a real drop in the winter, that might trigger the pineapple to fruit. Also dry conditions can trigger to fruit and a short day length. Like right now our days are growing, but come in the fall, then the days will start getting shorter. And that's another thing that can trigger the pineapple to fruit. Um, so either naturally, or if you want to induce fruiting, um, the fruit, the, um, the flower can help be initiated by using some ethylene gas. So you might've heard of the trick of you know, putting a small piece of apple or banana um, right down into the center of the crown, that will help produce some ethylene gas and trigger the plant to flower. I've also heard of people um, just putting like some apple cores or banana peels around the base of the plant 
And so it's kind of off gassing that ethylene gas underneath the plant and that may trigger it to flower. Um, this doesn't happen very quickly. So again, you have to be patient with pineapples and, and just general good care will help them um, you know, develop into a nice plant. And then um, when they are mature, they will fruit on their own. So you can just be patient and you don't really have to help them along and they'll do it on their own. So fertilization is important for optimal um, fruit and plant growth. So when you have a little, um, say a four inch or one gallon pineapple plant, you wanna use about uh, one tablespoon every eight weeks or every two months. So the idea with the pineapples is that they don't need a lot of fertilizer overall. So you just want to kind of fertilize frequently in small doses, kind of like spoon feed them. And you can use a granular or you can use a liquid. Um, so they like a more balanced fertilizer, um, something like a 666 or similar. Um, I like to use a fruit tree fertilizer for all my fruiting plants. And you can see the analysis on this bag is the 646. So the 6% 6 nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, and 6% potassium. And the nitrogen will be more important at the beginning growth stages when it's really putting out that vegetative you know, leaf growth. But um, as the plant moves into flowering and fruiting, then you may want some more um, phosphorus and potassium at that time. Um, but either way, the fruit tree fertilizer is good also because these often contain micronutrients. So some uh, important micronutrients for the pineapple include iron, magnesium, and zinc. So look at your fertilizer label and, and make sure it contains those things. And if not, you might want to, um, you know, get an alternative fertilizer or uh, something with those nutrients in it specifically for your pineapple. So when you're fertilizing, you know, every two months, um, you're going to do this for about two years. And as the plant is growing bigger, you're going to have to use a little bit more fertilizer. Um, so when the plant gets huge, you know, it's like three or four or five feet tall and wide, then you might use up to one cup of fertilizer. And I'm talking about something like a 666 fertilizer, but if you're using a stronger fertilizer, say like a 101010, then you would use a little bit less fertilizer because that is a stronger fertilizer. And when you are fertilizing, one more thing is to go around the drip line of the plant. Um, don't just put it all at the base, uh, just go around the plant um, in a drip line. And you can kind of base the amount of fertilizer on how much fertilizer does it take you to kind of make a ring around the plant. That's where all the um, growing roots are gonna be, the feeder roots that are gonna uptake those nutrients. So just a, a nice little sprinkling all the way around the plant and um, just keep fertilizing it frequently in small doses and um, make sure you're getting these micronutrients in there too. And then you'll have a very happy plant. Um, the irrigation is not really needed because pineapples are drought tolerant and we do get like 52 inches of rain, at least where I'm at in central Florida. And so um, you don't need to worry about irrigating them, but if you do um, want to irrigate them, we recommend uh, efficient irrigation, such as a drip line or like a little micro irrigation, like this micro bubbler here. And you can buy those uh, little kits, like Mr. Landscaper kits or something that has these micro irrigation components in there that you can just attach to your regular hose spigot. But um, irrigation is not totally essential. 
However, with proper irrigation, especially making it through the dry period that we're heading into right now, March, April, May, we usually don't get a lot of rainfall. Um, your fruiting will be faster with consistent water and the fruits will be larger with consistent water. So it is important um, for just the plant development, the flowering and fruiting to have some regular irrigation, especially during the dry times. Um, pineapples also benefit from compost and mulch. Just about every plant loves compost and mulch. So you can mix a little bit of compost into you know, your soil uh, when you're potting it, when you plant it, you can put a little compost right around the edges like you would put fertilizer. And then you can keep um, top dressing with the compost you know, two to four times per year. Or, or more if you want, usually too much compost um, doesn't hurt anything. And um, just incorporate it into the soil or just lightly into the top couple inches of the soil. And then um, pineapple plants also benefit from mulch. So we recommend uh, organic type of Florida friendly mulch. And organic, I mean made from a plant. It doesn't have to be certified organic but versus rocks or like rubber mulch, um, that tends to heat up the soil and the plant roots and it will stress your pineapple plants out. So use something like pine bark, um, pine straw, um, you know, if you get the free mulch like chipdrop.com and they deliver you a big truckload of mulch, that's a good way to get lots of mulch for your garden. Um, so any of those types of organic mulches, you know, they'll be good for your pineapple plants and they'll help to build the soil and keep the weeds down and help um, your plant grow. So if you don't use mulch, then you might want to keep up with the weeding um, because any kind of competition they have will just slow the growth of the pineapple down and slow it down from flowering and fruiting. So if you want to learn um, more about pineapple, we have this wonderful EDIS document that's called Growing Pineapple in the Florida Home Landscape by Dr. Jonathan Crane. And it gives you a little bit more detailed information than um, what I was sharing today. You can use your um, phone and scan the, the QR code here or you can just Google this title of this document, Pineapple Growing in the Florida Home Landscape, and just put like UF or UF IFIS, or it can be um, EDIS, E-D-I-S, any of those will lead you to this document here. That's a really great resource. And so um, that concludes my presentation, and now I'm gonna turn it back over to Bill. Okay, great, Tia. Gosh, I learned a couple of new things today I didn't know about. And I went ahead and pulled up um, a link to the University of Florida um, fact sheet on growing pineapples, and I put that in the chat box for everybody. Great, thank you. So we don't have a whole lot of questions, and I think we'll go ahead and we'll still hold them until the very end. Um, let me go ahead and... Let me unscreen share you. And I went ahead and put together a little short video. This um, I shot at one of my master gardener's yards and she has an actual food forest and she has a wide variety of different things growing there as you're gonna see. And this is more for, I know that we have a lot of people who just moved to Florida from other parts of the country and maybe they're not too familiar with what, um, uh, pineapples look like when they're growing in the garden and I wanted to kind of share some of that so let me go ahead and <clears throat> see if I can't pull this up everybody probably wants to turn their volume up a little bit so that you can hear it a little bit better okay and oh wait a minute I forgot I need to click the two buttons first 
And can you see that okay? Yep. Okay. Hey everyone, Bill Lester here. And today I'm with one of my master gardeners, Donna, and we're in her yard looking at some of the different things that she has growing. And of course, when I start doing a video like this is when they start cutting the grass on the other side of the canal here. So hopefully I can use my big room voice and you'll be able to hear me. But Donna has a food forest in her yard. And one of the plants that she has growing is pineapples. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to show everybody who's going to be growing pineapples but has never done it before. Maybe you're a, a recent transplant to Florida. You just moved here and you've heard that you can grow pineapples, but you don't know what they look like. Not sure how to do it. Well, our class is gonna tell you all the different important things that you need to know about water, fertilizer, care, how long it takes to get a pineapple. But I wanna take just a few minutes to show you what they look like actually growing in your yard and a couple of ideas about how you can incorporate even more pineapples into your normal landscape even if you live in a subdivision with the homeowners association pineapples are kind of easy to hide and squeeze in and they're great plants because eventually you're actually going to get a pineapple off of it which is something to eat so let's go ahead and look right down here at a pineapple plant so you can see pineapples are bromeliads and maybe you have a bromeliad either in a pot or somewhere in your garden there's thousands of different species of bromeliads, but pineapples are one of them. So the plant is never going to get a lot larger or wider than this. So the plant is stays at a nice manageable size. This is really, really handy because if you live in a homeowners association where you have a more traditional landscape, you don't need a whole lot of room to be able to squeeze a pineapple plant in. Obviously this isn't taking a lot of room. It's not going to get really huge and obvious. If you try planting uh, corn in your front flower bed, your neighbors are gonna notice, and they're probably gonna complain. And you can see that this pineapple actually has the beginnings of a pineapple coming out of it. So this is what it looks like at first. The pineapple is the flower and the fruit for the plant. So this looks similar to other bromeliads. They have a very similar type of flower, but over the next uh, month or two, it's gonna grow and get larger and Dawn is actually going to have another pineapple going here. So you may notice that plant doesn't look a perfect healthy green right now and part of the reason for that is this is early March and winter just ended <clears throat> and it feels like summer has begun pretty much today. It's very very sunny out here today, warm and this is cold damage from this past winter because if you're growing pineapples in central Florida Pineapples are naturally a tropical or subtropical plant and what's going to happen is every year we're going to get at least one really really cold night and your plant can possibly become damaged by the cold. But since it's so small it's very easy to cover either a towel or a blanket or even a trash can or some kind of container over it to help keep it warm is going to help protect the interior of the plant. But don't worry if you get a little bit of damage on the leaves or a little bit of brown or spots or dead tips because now that the weather is warming up and it's nice and sunny, it's going to start to grow. It's going to replace all those damaged leaves and it's going to be just fine and look just fine. So something else that I wanted to mention is cold damage or how to protect it from the cold and what the cold can do to other tropical and subtropical plants here, especially food forest or food producing plants <clears throat> is they're going to get a certain amount of damage, a certain amount of brown on the leaves, but it's really nothing to worry a lot about. It's going to outgrow it. You just have to plan on keeping it as warm as you can during the winter. Now, nice thing about pineapples is you can tuck them up underneath hedges, underneath other plants. And Donna told me that in her whole patch right here, this is a pineapple. This is a star fruit right here. Um, we're gonna have to do a class, I guess, on star fruit one of these days. And she has a mango right there next to it. And they're all kind of tucked around the pineapple and it helped to keep it warm when it got really, really cold this past winter. So taking your pineapples and tucking them up kind of close to a hedge, maybe close to the front wall of your house, 
Um, if you have a little alcove or enclosed area by your front door, that tends to be a warm spot on a really, really cold night and a good place to put things that are either tropical or subtropical to help them from getting damaged. So let me get back up here. And one other thing I need to mention that along with the cold during the winter, something else you need to watch out for is happening right now in the spring. It is a beautiful sunny day out here, getting pretty warm, a little bit breezy, <clears throat> and pineapples and other plants are all gonna start growing, but you're gonna have to keep them well watered. A lot of times here in Central Florida, it's very, very dry in late winter, early spring. That's when we usually have our drought season. So very important that as these plants begin their spring growth to get caught back up and replace all the damage they may have suffered during the winter, you really need to keep a close eye on the irrigation and keep them well watered and get them up and growing and going and that way you're gonna get a pineapple even faster. Now, of course, we don't wanna see people waste water with a lot of overhead irrigation or running the sprinklers for your entire yard. So something that works really well for any kind of flower bed is drip irrigation. And I'll go ahead and put a link to a class that we have on drip irrigation down below the video here so that if you'd like to watch that and learn how that you can install your own drip irrigation to water your food forest or your garden a little bit more efficiently and thoroughly and keep the plants that you want growing wet and not the weeds so much. The weeds don't need any more help than they already get. That'll be really, really helpful to you. So I think that's about all I really had other than very quickly showing that Donna does have a mango tree here, which is a little unusual for Central Florida, but you can do it with a little bit of planning <clears throat> and putting the tree in the right location, getting the right variety. This is a star fruit tree right here, and I'm very impressed. You don't normally see these, you know, further north than Homestead or South Florida, but she actually does get star fruit off of this. And way up above me are some papayas, very, very large papayas that also froze back during the winter. But that's okay. Now that the weather's warm, as soon as it starts raining on a regular basis, they're going to grow back and look fantastic and hopefully give her a lot more papayas. So I hope all this helps. And you can see the pineapples are really quite easy to grow, quite easy to find a corner or an empty spot somewhere in your yard to squeeze in another one or two or three or ten if you'd like. And if you're patient, eventually they're going to flower and give you a fruit just like you see starting down here on Donna's right now. So thank you very much. If you guys have any questions about this, just get in touch. And until I see you again, take care. Could you see that okay? Yeah, great video. Okay, great. I'm never really sure about the technology until I've tried it, so. Uh -huh, it can be tricky, yeah. Thanks for sharing the food forest with us. That was neat. Yeah, there's a lot of interest in that nowadays. We have master gardeners interested in that. And of course, that's who we're doing. I'm doing these kind of classes for people who want to be more sustainable, produce more of their own food, more healthy food for themselves, their families, not to be so dependent upon necessarily a grocery store. And we like to teach you and get you off to a good start, let you know where you can go with questions and give you a couple plants to get you started with too. So can't beat that. Yeah, I know you mentioned like, oh, plant one or two or maybe 10. Exactly. Know? I know that I could squeeze at least 10 in my yard. Yeah. If I get really creative, the little corners where you have room and there's nothing else going on there. But we do have a couple questions here you can help me out with. Okay. So Pam asked, does growing pineapples in five gallon buckets restrict their production or growth? I would say a five gallon bucket is adequate for um, growing a pineapple, but the only thing is they don't have very deep roots. So if you could make the five gallon bucket more like wide and squatty, that would be a more ideal container for them. Yeah, I agree. A five gallons is definitely large enough to hold their roots. I mean, that's what you would use for a tomato or peppers or squash, something that has a large root mass. Yeah, so five gallons kind of short and wide would be best. Uh, 
Got another question from Jessala. What size container for pineapple is best? Um, would you say five gallons is probably best or? They could probably do fine in a, a three gallon pot, you know, like think of the five gallon pot in that one foot, you know, opening on the top, but maybe not so deep. That would be something like a three gallon pot. So three gallon pot or larger. Okay, and Jen is asking, uh, do these get five feet high and five feet wide? Will trimming them back to a smaller size stunt their growth? And I've never really seen them. The leaves can get long mm -hmm. and they can kind of point out a long ways, but the whole plant isn't specifically five feet wide and five feet tall. They really don't take most pineapple varieties I see, which I guess most people start them from grocery store pineapple tops, most of them get about the size of what I showed in that video in Donna's yard, maybe a little bit taller, a little bit wider. Um, I wouldn't trim back the leaves. I wouldn't try to trim them back. That's going to damage the leaves. Um, you're going to have a lot of moisture loss. Yeah, and it would open it up for some plant infections or something. Yeah, I think they really need all those leaves to be able to produce the carbohydrates to, to make the fruits. So um, some of the varieties I have are larger, some of them are smaller, but like Bill said, most of them are pretty kind of small and compact. So just give it enough space where you don't have to trim it back. Yeah, in your presentation, I never really heard of the sugarloaf ones that are kind of whitish. Yeah, the white pineapple. Oh. Any idea if you could purchase them online? Uh, yeah, they're definitely out there. And oh. those are good for people. Like, you know how the yellow tomato has low acid? Well, this yeah. white pineapple is known for the low acid too. I'm going to have to try that sometime. Give it a try. It'll yeah, make a good a video at least. Mm -hmm. And Shannon asks, can you plant more than one to a container? Um, I usually stick with one per container, but I'm sure like you could plant multiple per container and that would be okay, but just you might have to water more or fertilize more and, and make up for that, you know, being in a tight space together. Yeah, because now you're going to have two plants with twice the amount of roots in a small area. And Zenphone, whoever that are, is Ask mm -hmm. me, um, will you have extra plants to sell when we pick up on Saturday? Probably not. Uh, the class sold out. So we have 45 spots. And as of this morning, 45 people have registered. So they're pretty much all spoken for. But good news, and I just mentioned this to uh, Tia earlier before we started, um, we're gonna continue doing classes like this here in Hernando County. We've had a really good response. I think a lot of people appreciate learning how to add more variety and more unusual things to their yards. And hopefully they're gonna be successful and produce more food for themselves and their families. Um, in late May, we're gonna have a class just like this, but we're gonna have it on yellow dragon fruit. Mm. So I know I really wanna try growing some dragon fruit in my yard. I've seen it growing in Homestead commercially, it can freeze. I'm going to have to be careful and get it covered in the winter. But if you keep it covered, I know that there are people, Tia, are there people in Orange County that yeah. you know of that are able to grow it pretty well? Oh, yeah. We grow tons of pineapples here. Well, no, I mean, um, um, dragon oh, fruit. Dragon fruit. I mean, yeah. No, we grow lots of dragon fruit here, too. They're, they're a little sensitive to the cold. Like I haven't seen humongous plants like you'll see in the pictures online, but um, there's definitely a lot of people who grow them. I've had one just growing up my magnolia tree for the past 10 years and wow. it makes a couple fruits a year, the pink kind. Okay, well, that's something to look forward to and keep following us into May, you know, as we get closer to May, uh, we'll probably go ahead and set a date and time and everything else in details within the next week or so. So Great. do we have any other questions from anybody on here today? Oh, we got a couple more that just popped up. Here, T, I'll let you handle this one. How do oh, you keep yeah. animals away? 
Um, you pick it as soon as it starts to ripen, you'll see a little yellow or orange shoulder on it and then harvest it, cut it with your clippers and bring it in the house and let it ripen in the house. Um, I've also tried like building little cages out of chicken wire and uh, put a stake to hold this chicken wire encapsulation, but that just seems like way too much work and sometimes they still get it. And what fertilizer ratio do you say is the best? Generally 666 or 10, 10, 10? Yeah, some kind of balanced fertilizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I like to use the fruit tree fertilizer because it often contains those micronutrients. Okay. And then Renee looks like she got in the last question here, asked, will you send us the recording? Yes, I will. In about an hour or two, as soon as uh, Zoom sends the link back to me, I'll email it out to all of you. And that way you'll have uh, the link to be able to watch this again. And like I said earlier, if you have any issues with being able to pick up the plants, if you're going to be out of town, just send me an email. Just let me know. That way we'll be sure to have plants at the office for you if you're picking them up there. And then enough plants at the nursery, if you're picking them up there, it makes it a lot easier for us to kind of coordinate and organize. Yeah, that's so exciting. Everyone's gonna get three pineapple plants for your collection. And yeah, and they look bad. really good. You're, I'm serious, you're gonna have to keep them well watered. I've had a tough time the last week or two because all of a sudden it's like, we're halfway through spring already and it's, I'm looking out my window right now, not a cloud in the sky, full sun, and these little pots dry out really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when will they be ready to bump up to maybe like a one gallon size pot? Two weeks. Okay. <laughs> really, yes, most, most any time. They're very, very healthy little plants and they're, they're already growing in the three inch pots. So yeah, you can, you can move them up to a larger pot. We are just about up to the time of year where if you're going to grow them in the ground, you could transplant them into your garden. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think we're going to get any more freezes. I'm not going to guarantee yeah. that, but yeah, I don't think so. Right. Yeah. So plant them in the ground or bump them up in the next size up pot and give them a little, you know, tablespoon of fertilizer and the mulch and the compost to get them off to a good start here in the next, you know, two weeks to a month. Okay, Shannon, you're very welcome. Pam, you're very welcome also uh, for all the great information. Uh, Tia, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and jumping in with this. I'll have to have you come back on something else again too. Yeah, sure. I'm all about all kinds of fruits and stuff. So thanks for having me.